The group stops at a hunter association branch near the labyrinth, and Calroy's group departs using a transfer method. However, Lamy's and Hulamy remain behind, following orders from the director Bear to survey the perimeter of the labyrinth. While they are there, a hunter named Miguel arrives, instantly captivating all the girls, even Lamy says that he must be some sort of hero. This causes Boxo to feel a tinge of jealousy. Miguel inquires about obtaining a detailed map of the labyrinth, and the girls inform him that it would take three days to provide an update map. He decides to return at another time, however, as night falls, it becomes clear that Miguel isn't quite the hero they initially imagined him to be. We learn that he came to the labyrinth because he heard there weren't many people around. Miguel bumps into Boxo, and it seems he gets nervous when talking to people, and doesn't understand why everyone stares at him, finding it somewhat intimidating. Boxo is surprised by Miguel's true personality, and feels empathy for him. In an attempt to help, Boxo offers Miguel a drink to help calm him down. The next day, Lamis informs Boxo that Miguel will be accompanying them on their job. As they head out together, Lamis tries to get to know Miguel better, but he mostly plays it cool and agrees with her. However, when Hulami asks him a question, he becomes nervous and excuses himself, deciding to be the rear guard for safety's sake. Boxo can't help but feel sorry for Miguel. Miguel, on the other hand, wonders about how he can improve his communication skills and overcome his nervousness. After a week of traveling, Lamy starts feeling unwell. Yulami becomes concerned about her and suggests that she ride in the cart, but Lamy's insists on continuing to walk. However, her condition worsens and she suddenly collapses. Luckily, Miguel manages to catch her before she falls. They decide to take a break, and it becomes evident that Lamy's is experiencing her time of the month. Boxo, always eager to help, transforms into a hygiene vending machine. Hulami is curious about what items it contains, and when she realizes its purpose, she knows how to use it to assist Lamis. Boxo then transforms into a washing machine and uses it to clean all of Lamis's clothes. Two weeks have passed since they began traveling together, and it seems Miguel has become more communicative with the group. He is finally able to eat with everyone. McKen detects a strange scent in the distance and alerts the group to stop. His friend Pell also senses it and can tell that there is a group of five men ahead. Yulami is surprised because there shouldn't be any hunters in a place like this. Miguel becomes nervous and expresses his concern that they might be after him. He wishes to go alone to avoid causing trouble for the others. Lamy stops him, insisting it's too dangerous to go alone. Yulami wonders why Miguel is being targeted, but Miguel can't provide an answer. Yulami reassures him, saying there's no need to worry since Boxo can protect them. Boxo manifests his barrier, and Hulami instructs him to test it. If Boxo can block an intense attack, Miguel will stay. He uses his intense attack against it but it gets blocked. Boxo is surprised to see he consumed 500 points from his attack. They continued on foot, and Miguel could sense that there were three swordsmen and two magic users. Lamis was impressed that he could sense them from so far away. As the men approached, their leader told Miguel that they had come for his life. He asked if Lamis and McKen were his companions, and Miguel told him they were not, urging him not to harm them. The leader assured him they wouldn't harm them if he didn't resist. However, Miguel didn't trust him, so he decided to fight. Lamis and McKen run off, and we see two of his men chasing after them. They use their magic attacks, but Boxo easily blocks them with his barrier. Boxo then transforms into his washing mode, and Lamy sprays them with water. She follows up with an attack using soup, blocking their view, and they easily manage to defeat them. Meanwhile, Miguel easily takes down the leader. Afterward, he thanks Lamis and McKen for their help and instructs them to gather the others while he gathers information from the captured man. When they regroup, he isn't able to explain why he is being targeted. He tells them that it's too dangerous to continue traveling together, and it's time to part ways. Lamis suggests that he joins Calroy's group since they are seeking strong allies and don't care about their past. Miguel agrees and says he will get in touch with them. However, as he leaves, he realizes realizes he can't handle being with more people. The group returns safely to the village. At the village, we see that Manami has held another meeting with the restaurant owners. She suggests holding an eating competition since the repairs in the village are almost complete, so she thinks holding a contest would be a good idea to attract more people. The other owners think that's a good idea, and they decide to hold it in two weeks' time. After one week, we see the restaurant owners asking Boxo for help. Yulami asks them what's going on. Manami explains that everything was going well with the competition competition, until they heard that Sui and the Bearcats are entering, and they are known for their insane appetite. The restaurant owners worry that they may go broke. Lamis asks Boxo if he can help them, and he provides them with cola so that the bubbles can make the contestants eat less. Lamis worries if the contestants will complain since the water drinkers will have an advantage. The restaurant owners suggest advertising the drink at a high price until the day of the contest, and on the day of the contest,
contest, they will give it out for free so people will be more likely to want it. The restaurant owners express their gratitude to Boxo, and Manami hopes that he can help if they encounter any other problems. On the day of the competition, a large crowd has gathered. Manami announces that due to the high number of entries, there will be two preliminary rounds, with five contenders from each group advancing to the finals. The first group of contestants takes their places, including the Bearcats. Manami also reveals that there will be a time limit for finishing the food. After a moment, it becomes clear that all four Bearcats have finished, and the last spot in the finals is taken by a hunter. In the next group of contestants, we see Sui, and even Lamis has practiced. Manami starts the round, and we witness Sui devouring her plate immediately, becoming the first to finish. Everyone is surprised, and Lamis manages to finish in time as well. They move to the finals. We see that Boxo has added another function and plays music for the contestants. They get ready to start, and Manami tells them that whoever eats the most during the time wins the competition, and even gets a prize. They begin eating, and we notice Sui immediately finishing the first dish. The Bearcats try to keep up with her, but she finishes the plate so quickly that she ends up winning the competition. She is given the prize, but when she tries to open it she finds that there is nothing in the box. Then Manami reveals that the real prize is actually to have free use of Boxo for a day. Boxo is surprised to hear this, and Manami begs for him to go along with it for just one day. The next day, Sui brags to Akia and Shiro about her prize. Kalroy gets excited and tells Sui to go monster hunting since they have Boxo for a day. Sui says that she doesn't plan on lending him out and intends to go with Boxo to the origin stratum for the day. They arrive at the small house and are greeted by a bunch of kids, and Sui's master welcomes her back. Sui introduces Boxo and demonstrates what he can do, and they all try his food. Boxo is happy to see all the children delighted, and then he transforms into a balloon machine, giving each of them a balloon. Afterward, Lamy sprays them with water, which also brings joy to the kids. Boxo then does their laundry. Sui instructs the kids to go take a bath, but it seems that there is no hot water. Boxo transforms into a hot spring vending machine and quickly fills the bath. They enjoy a relaxing bath together, and Mia thanks Boxo for his help. At night, the kids continue to enjoy Boxo's food, and Lamis expresses her happiness at seeing the children smile. Later, when they are sleeping, Sui approaches Boxo and thanks him for everything, promising to pay him back. Boxo tells her it's not necessary and offers her a free drink, which she gratefully accepts before retiring for the night. During the night, a group of men approaches, seeking Boxo because they've heard he can make unlimited food. Boxo considers waking up the others, but that would put the children in danger. Instead, he transforms into a dry ice machine, creating fog that frightens the men. He then uses the barrier to fire ice at them, forcing them to leave. In the morning, Boxo shows them what happened the previous night, and Sui recognizes that the intruders are former hunters. Mia gets ready and instructs Sui to take care of the children while she teaches the intruders a lesson. Lamis expresses concern, but Sui reassures her, mentioning that Mia is an expert hunter, and even Kalroy admits she is better than him. After an hour, Mia returns, smiling and telling them that the intruders won't bother Boxo again. Lamis meets back up with Kalroy, and she panics upon hearing that they are planning a campaign to the dead stratum, an area filled with skeleton fiends and ghosts. Lamis becomes frightened, and Boxo is surprised to see her so scared of them. She's too terrified to go, and Kalroy worries about who will carry Boxo since Lamis can't join them. Felmina mentions that with Boxo unable to come, solving food issues for a long campaign would be impossible while they search for the boss. Lamis interrupts stating that she never said she wouldn't come, and that she isn't afraid. They prepare to set off, but Lamis notices that Felmina is not with them. Sui tells Lamis that Felmina gets easily frightened, so she isn't coming along. They arrive at the dead stratum, and they notice that the buildings are all abandoned. Lamis tries her best not to be scared. When they reach the inn, Lamis gets frightened by a portrait of a woman. Suddenly, the woman appears behind her, and Lamis instantly passes out. Calroy carries Lamis, and Boxo gets placed at the front of the inn. Hulami tells Boxo more about Lamis, and how easily she gets scared. She can't believe that she is still staying despite her fear. At night, ghosts appear, and Boxo finds himself surrounded by various monsters, but they seem to wander aimlessly. Boxo puts up his barrier just in case and considers using several anti-undead items. He throws some rock salt at them, but it has no effect. He tries other items, but they also prove ineffective. In the morning, Hulami checks on him and is surprised to see so many items scattered on the floor. Sui and the twins go out to explore, and even Kalroy leaves to find more backup. The inn owner approaches Boxo and tells him that the monsters wander around the village at night, but they only seem to envy the living, which is why Boxo has never been attacked, being just an object. Lamis is feeling depressed because she is still scared of the area. Hulami comes to cheer her up, telling her that he will help her overcome her fear. Lamis becomes excited 
but when Hulami suggests she stroll through the village, she immediately refuses. Hulami then suggests she buy some restorative potion at the store. As she goes to retrieve Boxo, Hulami stops her, insisting she go alone. She reluctantly agrees, but as she attempts to go, a door suddenly opens, frightening her, and she rushes back to Boxo. Lamis tells Hulami that her job is to carry Boxo, and believes there's no use if she doesn't have him with her. Hulami accepts this, and encourages her to try it that way. Lamis is doing her best, and Boxo sees that she is making a genuine effort to overcome her fear. He decides to encourage her by transforming into a music machine, which cheers Lamis up. She proudly displays her newfound confidence to the others. Hulami playfully mocks her, suggesting that she should try facing her fears without Boxo's assistance. However, Lamis immediately refuses. Calroy returns, bringing along the Bearcats band and Miguel. Boxo is surprised that Miguel was able to contact them, and briefly worries about his communication skills, but it becomes evident that he has improved significantly. Calroy reminds them that their goal is to find the King of Souls and defeat him, suggesting they search for him during the day. As they head out exploring, they are eventually surrounded by a group of skeletons, however, the group easily dispatches all of them. After several days, Boxo notices a skeleton peering at the window with envy. Then, a zombie boy approaches Boxo, seemingly wanting something. Boxo offers him a drink, and the boy starts biting the bottle because he can't open it. The next day, the same boy approaches Boxo again, so Boxo gives him another drink. It becomes a nightly routine, and Boxo begins to feel a connection with the boy. While they are camping outside during their exploration, Boxo wonders what the boy is doing while he's away, but the boy manages to find him. However, the twins are on duty, and they immediately eliminate him. Boxo feels bad about it, and Shiro finds a coin on the boy, wondering if he was trying to buy something. Back at the inn, Calroy mentions that they have an idea of where the King of Souls might be. Calroy mentions that the King of the Souls is a powerful magic user who can cast various elemental spells. Hulami asks how they are going to deal with his magic, and Calroy explains that Boxo's barrier can help protect them against his attacks. Boxo agrees with the plan, and they all raise a toast before facing the boss. We see the group heading toward the King of Souls, and when they arrive there, Calroy asks Akia what's going on. Akia shows Calroy that up ahead is the King of the Souls, and that a bunch of different monsters like skeletons and zombies are under his control. Calroy is thinking of a way to reduce their numbers. Then suddenly, Boxo transforms into a kerosene pump. Hulami grabs it and pushes the pump and gasoline comes out. Hulami notices its unusual posture and suggests lighting it on fire. After seeing how effective it is, she instructs them to douse the enemy with it. They begin firing the gasoline bottles at the monsters, and Boxo removes the plastic so that the monsters get covered in gasoline and we see them catching on fire. The group moves through the flames with Boxo's barrier, continuously defeating the monsters as they advance. The King of Souls grows angry and unleashes his magic against the group, but Boxo successfully manages to handle it. The King of Souls is surprised by this. He uses another spell to raise stones at them, causing them to get separated from Lamis. The King of the Souls asks Lamis about Boxo, but she doesn't want to answer and rushes at him. He counters with another spell in order to blow them away, but Lamis doesn't give up and manages to resist the wind thanks to her blessing of strength. Realizing that his spell isn't working, he starts splitting the ground underneath her, and Lamis starts to fall. Boxo quickly changes his form, and Lamis seizes the opportunity to escape. As he begins another spell, Sui uses her arrow to block his attack, and then Lamis, utilizing her and Boxo's combined weight, delivers a finishing kick. The Soul King is defeated, and Sui and Calroy praise Boxo and Lamis for their victory. But we see the Soul King cursing at them, and Calroy steps up, ready to finish him off. Suddenly, there is darkness in the sky, and a black orb drops onto them. Everyone panics, and Boxo's points drop significantly, but eventually it stops. Miguel and Calroy get up. As Calroy tries to grab his hat, black vines start appearing, taking the remains of the King of the Soul and creating a black orb in the sky. The orb dissolves, giving rise to another monster skeleton which seems to recognize that Boxo is from another dimension. Lamis asks what his name is, and he tells them that he is called Netherlord. He examines the Soul King coin, but he doesn't show interest and drops it. Lamis inquires about his purpose, and he explains that he is just hunting just like them, who keep on killing the Stratum Lords for only their coins. While they are talking, Miguel sneaks sneaks away to give him a surprise attack, but it has no effect, and he sends Miguel flying. Hulami tells Lamis to retreat as she throws a bottle of Boxo's gas. He mocks her about the attack, and Sui uses her fire arrow, causing an explosion. As they seize this opportunity to leave, the Netherlord blasts them, grabbing Hulami, recognizing her as a threat, and in his other hand, he seizes Sui, and proceeds to give them a lightning shock. Lamis tells him to stop, 
but it seems she's too late, and we see both of them out cold on the floor, thrown by him. Lammy starts crying from the devastation, and she charges in, but the Netherlord avoids all of her attacks. Lammy's wonders what to do. Boxo has a plan but is worried it might not work. The Netherlord counterattacks with his magic, but Boxo manages to block it in time. Lammy's tells Boxo that she believes in him, and this gives Boxo the courage. He transforms into a balloon machine, and fills the barrier with balloons. The Netherlord says that it's useless, and as he starts his attack, Boxo shoots Lammy's from the barrier and uses his balloons to distract him. With this chance, Lammy's manages to get a clean hit on the Netherlord's staff and breaks it. The Netherlord retreats, and we see him disappearing in the dust. Lammy's rushes to Hulami to check on her and sees that she is not awakening. She reminds her that they promised to stick together till the end. Kalroy gets up and rushes to Sui, refusing to let her die. They perform CPR on them, and this gives Boxo an idea on how to save them. He transforms into an emergency defibrillator. Lammy's and Kalroy are confused, and Boxo sees that there is no time to lose, and immediately uses the points to learn how to use the telekinesis skill, and moves it with his mind to them. Boxo uses all of his remaining points to increase the chances of success. He shocks Hulami to jumpstart her heart and worries that he was too late to save her. But then she suddenly wakes up. They use it on Sui, and she also gets saved. Kalroy is relieved she manages to survive. They make it back to the village and report the situation to the director. The director mentions that he has read about the Netherlord in the old records, and suspects he is a general serving the Demon Lord. Boxo gets worried to hear that there is someone even stronger than the Netherlord. Lammy's goes to the inn, and we see Manami rushing at her and asking if she is okay since she fought against a monster even stronger than the dungeon boss. The news spreads around the village, and all the people start praising Boxo for saving Sui and Hulami's lives. Later, we see Miguel approached by the Bearcats, and they ask him what he plans to do next. Miguel mentions that he was defeated by the Netherlord in the battle, and swears to them he will beat him the next time they meet. The Bearcats get happy hearing this. McCain tells him that the director would summon a bunch of expert hunters the next time they face the Netherlord. This makes Miguel nervous, and worries about how he's going to deal with talking to all these new people. At night, we see Calroy reflecting on the battle and worrying about his people getting hurt just to grant his wish. The twins approach, saying it was their own decision from the start to follow him, and tell Calroy to move forward and not to worry. The next day, we see Lammy's and Boxo walking, and Boxo wonders where she is going. They arrive, and it seems she took him to the same place she found him. Lammy's reflects on all the things that have happened since she met him and thanks him for protecting her. He thinks about the last fight, and the fact that many people got hurt. Lammy's tells him it's not his fault that people got hurt, and mentions that thanks to him, Sui and Hulami survived. Boxo is touched and amazed at how much she cares about him. Hulami and Sui suddenly appear, and Lammy's asks what they are doing there. Suddenly the two of them kiss Boxo. Boxo, thanking him, and we see Lammy's freaking out. Hulami tells Lammy's to thank Boxo too since he saved her a lot. She starts approaching Boxo but is too embarrassed to do it. So Hulami and Sui give her a push, and she ends up kissing Boxo. Lammy's rushes off, chasing after Hulami, and Boxo is left thinking that being reincarnated as a vending machine was not a bad thing after all.